Hello, it's Dr. Giovanni Rondo with Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit. And I am so excited. We're in season three, and this is episode three. And I have, gosh, doubly the pleasure of having several guests. Like, I, I normally only have one guest, but I have two guests today. And we're talking about nursing, specifically nursing in our community, the African-American community. So I thought it would be just very important for us to have several guests on talking about this very important topic. So I will let them introduce themselves. Um, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who you are, and how you got into nursing. Okay. Well, my name is Mertice Poe, and I am a native of Mobile, Alabama. Okay. I'm all the way from Alabama. All the way okay. from Alabama. Okay. And I always wanted to be uh, helping someone when they're sick. And uh, when I was in my senior year, my, my grandfather had a stroke, and his father was taking care of him at home, because that's where we had to go. So this was your great-grandfather taking my, care of your his my, grandfather? His, my father was taking care of his father, Okay. Got and I would help him take care of his father. But uh, my grandfather passed in 46, and I let my mother and my father, my father was a principal of school, and my mother was a teacher, <coughs> excuse me. I let them know that I wanted to attend a nursing school. And at the time they were thinking about schools with the Bachelor of Science degree. And that is the type of school that I wanted to attend. So my daddy started, since he knew a little something about checking on accommodations, he decided he would check Tuskegee and he, learned that Tuskegee had a BS degree program. And, uh, but he checked the accommodations for Tuskegee and uh, we had to uh, travel on l and &E Railroad to a little town called Chiha. And uh, after you leave Chiha, then you had to get a ride somehow to Tuskegee. It was institute then, but now, but it is, Tuskegee University, yeah. Okay. And, uh, but he wasn't too satisfied with, uh, he didn't think it was too safe for me to be on the l and Railroad, because sometimes they would be too late, and uh, wouldn't, we wouldn't get there until night. So he said, well, he knew that he wasn't gonna allow me to attend Tuskegee in Alabama, because that was what he wanted. So he decided to check Dillon University in New Orleans because that was the only other school that African Americans could get a, ba a bachelor degree in nursing. So when you check Dillon University, they had a cab company that they contracted with. They will uh, meet the l and &E Railroad whenever the students were coming to New Orleans coming to Dillard University. And uh, sometimes the, uh, Dillard University had their bus at the l and Railroad. Mm. So we had two ways in order to get to uh, Dillard University that, that they considered safe wow. travel. And, and uh, so he said, well, he, when he talked to me, he wanted to know how did I feel about not attending a school in Alabama, because I was dead set on Alabama. But my, my accommodations at Dillard University were, were safer, so I accepted Dillard University, and that's, that's where I attended Dillard University. And um, I, Dillard University had a five-year program because it was a Bachelor of Science degree. Wow. And, uh, Listen, I'm, I'm trying to think about, oh yeah, I can tell you that we, we attended Dillard University, it was a very strict school, and it still is. And no matter how much money you paid, but if you didn't meet all the requirements, they had a chaperone who would take you home. They would escort you home no matter 
but you still couldn't stay there if you didn't didn't uh, uh, come up to the requirements of, of Dylan. But wow. I, yes. And uh, I, when they finished eliminating us, it were five <laughs> of us left. How many was in your initial class? Uh, they say about 20 who left. They had to leave for various reasons. Okay. You okay. see. And it, the last class was the five of us in the class at Dillon University. Wow, that is an amazing story. And, we, and we, we had to be very smart. I'm not bragging on myself, but we had, <laughs> of course, we of had course. to be very smart in order to remain at Dillon because they didn't allow you to stay there. It's sort of like a private school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it still is. It still very is. Good. Yeah. Wow, what and a we, story. Yeah, and we, we are, uh, we did our uh, clini clinical at uh, Flint, Good Flint Goodrich Hospital and Charity Hospital. In New Orleans? In New Orleans. Okay. That's okay. where we did our clinical. And uh, my class graduated in August of 1953. Wow. That is an amazing and story. And to think, you know, it started with you, um, you know, having the experience with your grandfather having the stroke and then your father and then him making those decisions about your safety. Yes. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. That is really amazing. And we'll get back to you. And uh, so we also want to um, also know about our other guest. She's also a nurse. And so we want to know, tell us about yourself and then how you got into the field of nursing. Okay. Well, my name is Stacy Hobson and... Thank you, Ms. Poe, for somewhat mm -hmm. paving the way <laughs> for me to make it, you know. So I um, grew up with a nurse in the family, my aunt, my favorite aunt. And um, I always knew I wanted to end up in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had applied, when I come, came home from the military, I applied um, to a nursing program and respiratory therapy program. And I got accepted to both. And my aunt was like, oh, we're going to have another nurse in the family. And so I was always mm -hmm. defiant. And I said, no, I'm just going to be a respiratory therapist. We already have one nurse in the family. Um, so I worked as a therapist for a few years. And that longing to truly take care of the whole patient was always there. Mm -hmm. And my aunt mm -hmm. was not the type to say, I told you so, but she said, I told you so. <laughs> and Your favorite aunt. My aunt, favorite. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My favorite. Mm -hmm aunt um, and so I went back to school and became a nurse. Um, Where did you go? I went to, well I did U of L's program for respiratory therapy so financially I went did JCC's program mm -hmm. um, to become a nurse uh, and my aunt and my grandmother were the ones to be able to pin me. Mm -hmm. um, Your grandmother was a nurse also? No or? my grandmother oh. wasn't a nurse but um, and mine all came from just from watching my aunt and being at the old general hospital mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with her and watching her, you know, back then shake the thermometer. To <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Nursing has come a long <laughs> yes, way. Yes, and, we're, yes. and we're definitely going to talk about that. So mm -hmm. as you can see, we just have some amazing guests today. Just, mm -hmm. oh, this is, I'm so excited. So can you just talk a little bit about... Um, what you love about the nursing field, what you loved about, you know, when you were uh, as a nurse, what you loved about it, and then some of the things that maybe you could do without in terms of nursing. Okay. Well, the reason why I love nursing so much is because uh, my mother was a teacher, and um, she, she had a stroke. And she was in the hospital for a while, and they did a lot of studies and everything on her. And then one day the doctor came in and told me to take my mother home. He said, because she's not going to be with us too long. So I decided I didn't know whether I wanted to take my mother home. And then I said, well, I, I can't put her in the nursing home. I couldn't get ready for that. 
But anyway, I decided I would take my nurse, my mother home and nurse her myself. Mm -hmm. So you had your own and nursing. You that's right. Brought the I nursing knew. to your home. That's okay. right. But the, the bad part about it was my nurse, I mean, my mother was in a coma when he told her, told me to take her home because she was going to soon be away from us. My mother lived for seven years. Wow. And I had this friend who I taught how to be a nurse who helped me with my mother. And that's what I loved about nursing because I was able to do everything that I could do for her that she needed and I knew everything that she needed. And I didn't have to ask anybody. The doctor called and said, give me whatever I wanted for my mother. And that's the part of nursing that I really love. Wow, so you were- I had a chance to show her the money that she had spent on me. Right. Although I didn't wow. know whether she was aware or not, because she was in a coma when I carried her home. So I didn't know what she could hear, you know. Yes. Wow. But I, I just enjoyed the fact that I could let her know that I, I could do what she wanted me to do and what I wanted to do. Wow, that sounds mm -hmm. like absolute love in action. Mm -hmm. You know, and right. just be able to do that for your mom mm -hmm. and how, you know, obviously your mom took care of you and then you be able to give that's that back. Right. That is so beautiful. It really touches and my I, heart. And, yeah. I, and at I the time, I was still able to work. So you worked? that friend. You worked and yes, also? I worked. Okay. Sure did. I was able to work. And then you taught your friend how to basically do the same things that you did. That's right. Was she a nurse? No. Okay. That okay. was the good part about yeah. it. That's what I love. <laughs> That's right, and I had to, I had to be to work six thirty in the morning, six o'clock. She would be knocking on my door. Wonderful. She ne she was never late. I left home at six o'clock because I had to be to work at six thirty, and she was right there at six o'clock every morning. The two of us taking care of my mother, wow. keeping her dry, taking care of everything, all of her needs, and didn't have to be concerned about. It. Be it so you know what that means. Mm -hmm. yes, wow, right. now that is an that, amazing I story. Really love. That's yes. what I love. Yes. Wow. Now, Ms. Hobson, what kinds of things, you know, do you love about nursing? I love, one of the big things I love is being a patient, an advocate for the mm -hmm. patient. I'm big as far as that's concerned. Um, even if it comes to fussing with the doctor um, over how we know. <laughs> yes. what the patient wants. Um, <laughs> And I also, Miss Poe, um, was able to showcase my skills because mm -hmm. I lost my, my RN, my nurse, my aunt, my angel last year. Mm -hmm. And I was able to um, care for her yeah. in her last days. Mm -hmm. And I was her, you know, patient advocate mm -hmm. and was able to speak to the doctors on her behalf. So the mm -hmm. same nurse mm -hmm. that inspired you to become a nurse you actually were able to take care of. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, know, my goodness. What that. a uh, full yeah. circle. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I, I consider nursing to be just love and action. That's love what it sounds like. Yes. That's oh, what goodness. it sounds like. If, you, yes. if you're a loving person, mm -hmm. yes. you got to be a loving person. So. Yes. Wow. That is just amazing. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of, I know we're talking about all the things that we love, you know, when it comes to nursing. What are the things that maybe you could, do without when it comes to the field of nursing? Like things that you don't love about it? To me, it was the, the politics, the, um, and it was important, the charting, and because I would work sometimes 13 and 14 hours instead of those 12 hour shifts because, mm -hmm. you know, charting, it, charting and, and, down. and I, I don't know about you, Ms. Poe, but um, nursing became um, one of those things where they would put a little more on you than what you could really bear or take care of. And so it took me from being able to hold a hand at the bedside and be mm -hmm. there for that patient to, you know, making sure that paperwork and those numbers were correct. Yes. Um, or, you know, in case something were to happen. Mm -hmm. So it, it just kind of 
it, it stretched you to the limit. Because if you wanted to stand there and hold that hand and be there with that patient, you better be prepared to stay a few extra hours to make sure that charting's correct. And I didn't, I, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and why mm -hmm. is that? Because it seems like you're being taken away from really caring for the patient to just caring for a chart Take or, yes. or taking um, care of the money factor or whatever. Yeah, the, the hospital business, politics. The business, yeah. yeah. The hospital politics. So I don't know why um, it became that. Um, but if you're like me and you tried to still give that extra love and mm -hmm. care, it was mm -hmm. a bit, it's a bit harder on you mm. to, to do both. And it, it was, became mentally taxing. Okay. And what I didn't like about mm -hmm. nursing, the director of nursing at this hospital where I was working, mm -hmm. she learned that I had a BS degree in nursing and she didn't have. So she, mm -hmm. she got with the uh, Catholic sisters and of course trumped up her charge mm -hmm. so, she, it, so she could get her to help her get rid of me. Really? Yes. Because yeah. of your BSN? Because That's of right. your, be, you have more a more education? Degree. That's right. And the, she did not have it. She didn't have a BS degree, but she was a director of nurses. Oh, but wow. Okay. Her job was something that I qualified for. Qualified, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But at the time, couldn't be there wow. because of, as she said. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But anyway, <coughs> she, she was disappointed because I was a little, I put the Ju Jerry Judy on him. And <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. That's right. I was too smart for them. That's right. They wow. had to leave me alone. Had to leave you alone. <laughs> so speaking of which, you know, we're talking about uh, particularly um, nursing for our community in the African-American community specifically. Did you all ever experience, would you want to talk about issues when it comes to racism? when it comes to the field of nursing, um, what you experienced and, you know, how you dealt with, with those types of things? Well, when I, when I was a student at Dillard University, Dillard uh, hired a nursing coordinator because, um, you know, you had some, some uh, nurse, nursing students who were jealous of those five black ones mm -hmm. in there because we, we, we knew too much. And everything mentioned, it had been taught to us, mm -hmm. and we knew it. And and uh, so so I I just said I I, I don't know. I was I, I had a thought then that was, maybe you can go on with it. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. So any episodes that you want to kind of discuss I've when it comes to races, how you were you know, treated or how you are treated. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because I think a lot of times we want to sweep kinds of, you know, the difficult things under the rug. But I think when you can face and discuss and acknowledge issues that have gone on, mm -hmm. we can better handle them. We can better teach other people how to, you know, fight this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and racism isn't, is, it's not just a, it's a, it can be personal, but it's also huge in terms of systemic and institutionalized. And so to be able to break down the walls of the institutions that perpetuate racism, we, we need to face it. And so, you know, sometimes we have to be personal about it. And the field of medicine, the field of nursing has been, and you could probably say that that much more so in the state of Alabama, has been, you know, racialized, you know, in the field of medicine overall did experiments like the, you know, we've talked a little bit about the Tuskegee experimentation and the things that happened years ago. And that's just one uh, episode. That's something that people know a lot about. Um, but just, we just, th there's tons and tons and piles of, of under, um, under the sheet mm -hmm. types of things that have gone on. Absolutely. No pun intended, but, you know, and so, being able to f talk about it, face those things, will allow us to deal with it. So I'm not trying to be controversial, but I just want right. to, you know, just kind of allow it an open door for that. Well, no, it's not being controversial, it's being real. Mm -hmm. And, oh my goodness, I have definitely dealt um, with racism in the workplace, um, from the hospital to uh, yeah, working out in the field to patients. 
um, uh, families. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely still goes on uh, in nursing schools. I have a daughter that's in nursing school right now mm -hmm. that's had to deal with that. And the mama and me wanted to go to the school. Not the nurse in you, huh? Not the nurse in me. The nurse, <laughs> mama. The nurse in me didn't want to go to school. The mama and me wanted to go to school. So I kind of mixed them together and gave her what she needed to, um, to beat it. So it, it's always about having to perform extra to have that um, upper hand at all times. You have to perform better. You have yeah, to. Yeah. You have to know more. You have to know more. more. You have to, to be seen yourself. as half. Well, you yeah. have to prove yourself constantly. Mm -hmm. I would just, you know, I, it's amazing to me. You would think mm -hmm. that we have evolved by 2021. By 2021, because mm -hmm. I know you saw a lot as well. Yes. But this I feel like I've seen a lot as mm -hmm. well. You know, and I would call mm -hmm. my aunt and be like, "Hey." I've got this, and one thing she would always tell me, she called me Stacy Lou, she said, keep <laughs> a record of everything, that's the right. day, the that's time. Right. That's right. And, and it was right. a couple of times that I hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I tell my daughter, keep a record, write it down, who was involved, mm -hmm. what they said. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I thought about something. That's why I, I just went a total blank because I realized I didn't want to discuss it. And I had, couldn't, couldn't think of something else to say. But some things were pretty terrible. Yeah. 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 Well, we, this is literally, I need to do another show because mm -hmm. I didn't even get a chance to talk all the questions or, or even bring up a lot of the questions that I really had. So one of the things I did want to at least end with because we're pretty much ending the show is, um, you all as nurses, um, we're all in the medical field. I'm a physician, of course. But, and we talk about healthy mind, body, and spirit. How do you all take care of yourselves in this world? Okay. How do you show up? How do you nurse yourself? And what kinds of things do you do in terms of taking care of yourself for our, our audience? I'll let you go first, Mrs. Pope. Okay. Uh, I have to be careful about what I eat. Okay. I don't eat anything fried. People like fried chicken. Okay. You don't have any fried chicken at all? No. <laughs> you don't go by Indy? No. No, okay. I don't re eat anything <laughs> fried. And I don't, I don't eat anything that I know will hurt. Like, I can't eat pork. I would love to have some barbecue. But it, have, it has to be chicken. I can't Baked. eat. Baked. Or grilled or broiled. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I okay. can't eat. I don't eat pork okay. because it it causes my blood pressure to yeah. go up. Yeah. Yeah. And I only use olive oil. Okay. I don't use all the, the vegetable oils and all that. I I eat fruit, and I do everything that I can think of that I know is healthy for me. Absolutely. I don't eat it because somebody else said. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Okay. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Ms. Paul, you gotta make me um up my ante here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do eat healthy for the most part. I haven't eaten pork in probably about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. So that I did find that even being in shape, um, and trying to eat right that, that pork it will affect yeah. your blood pressure no matter what. Mm -hmm. So sure will. it will definitely do that. Um, mind, I try to definitely do some things that I like, mm -hmm. some reading periodically, mm -hmm. um, trying to do more meditation. Mm -hmm. um, that's big in the community nowadays. You can find that everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, they even have apps for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meditation yeah. apps. So, yeah. yeah, and then feeding the spirit with positive daily affirmations, yeah. and that's what I'm teaching my, my young students. Wow, wonderful. So, not exercise, not every day, but I exercise. <laughs> exercise, all right. I try. So, awesome. So, eating well, this uh, right. feeding good things to the mind, and also exercising. Sounds That's like right. those are the things that and are important. Try to avoid stress. Oof. 
that's a whole yeah. other topic. We'll have to all bring you topic. back <laughs> to, to talk about that, avoiding stress. Well, thank you all so much. This has been a wonderful, just wonderful show in terms of, you know, getting doubly the, 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 the discussion um, about nursing in our community, the things that we need uh, to help our community to not just survive, but to really thrive. So thank you all for coming today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit, where we focus on the issues important for our community to make the whole world better. Thank you and be well.